Let us now look ahead to the future. That is, more specifically, this coming weekend's UFC Fight Night, Cannoneer versus Strickland, going down Saturday, December 17th, at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas. Headlined by two top middleweights, Jared Cannoneer and Sean Strickland. <clears throat> We're going to talk about, I believe, seven of the bouts on this awesome card. We're going to leave some ones out for the sake of time that uh, are worthy to be dissected. Uh, any of those fights, guys, fights or fighters that you want to put a, a quick spotlight on for our listeners and viewers? I can't sure, I'll go which first. To cut. I will... Uh... I will highlight my boy Michal Olashajuk. He's fighting Cody Brundage on this card. Uh, I've talked to him off on the show before. He's a guy that I believe in. <clears throat> believe in. I don't know why that came out with a weird accent right there. Um, yeah, I think he's legit. I think he's going to work his way up in this division, and I think he beats Brundage here and maybe does it impressively with a knockout, so I would keep an eye on that one. And then uh, the other one I would say, Omar might have something to say on this one too, is uh, we're not doing the Brian Battle fight, right, in our previews? No. <laughs> no <clears throat> so, yeah, Brian Battle is filling in on late notice against uh, Renat Fakhredin- Fakhredinov. Uh, and I think that's an awesome fight. The odds are tight. Battle's plus 125. Uh, Fakhredinov is minus 150. So that's a big one. Brian Battle's good. He's been proving that, but... Uh, Renat is 19 and one. He looked fantastic yeah. in his debut battles on short notice. I don't know. That's, that's a toss up fight. It'll be really interesting to see, uh, if battle can come out on top in that one. Cause if he does, Brian battles pretty, pretty damn legit because. Renat- <clears throat> okay. Uh, first fight we're going to talk about going down, uh, in the flyweight division between David, the undertaker Dvorak and Manel. Starboy cop. Uh, Dvorak, the 30 year old out of the Czech Republic, 20 and 4 as a pro, 8 knockouts and 8 submissions. He is coming off of a loss against Mateusz uh, Nikolaou back in March of this year. Manel Cop, on the other hand, on the other side, the 29 year old from Angola, 17 and 6 as a pro, off his 17 victories, 11 by way of knockout, 5 others by submission, only 1 win by decision he'll be coming to this weekend with back-to-back wins uh omar let me throw it over to you first give us your impression of manel cop versus david dvorak i think this is a good fight um losing to matthias nicolau at this point is something that apparently is going to happen um so i don't take that one too hard when it comes to you know seeing that on their record uh, Manel Cop has also lost to Alexandri uh, Pantoja, who, again, another top elite contender, no skin off the back, especially when that was his UFC debut. Um, and his last two performances against Ari Osbarn and uh, Zuma Gulov yeah. have both been yeah, fantastic, awesome. star worthy. Um, and I think that was kind of the Manel Cop that we all expected to see from day one. So uh, I- I'm pretty high on Manel Cop. I do think that the man has a lot of skills. Uh, I just think he needs to really perform. So I'm going to go with Manel Cop by KO round two. Yeah, man. Okay, Mark. All right, David Dvorak is the dog. He is plus <clears throat> 200. Manel Cop is minus 250. Uh, you know where I'm going with this fight. I uh, have talked up my boy Manel Cop before. Uh, I don't know what on earth he is doing on the early prelims. I don't understand it. We have the third fight from the main event on this card as Amir Albazi versus Alessandro Costa, which is a late replacement and a fight we're not even discussing. But you have whatever this is, number nine and number 12 or something in the flyweight division as your second fight of the whole night. So I don't understand that one. But with that said, uh, I'm a big believer in the talent of Manel Cop. He's, he's had a couple fights fall out recently that if I remember were not, or one was his fault, maybe one wasn't. At first they thought he popped and then they realized that he didn't pop some bullshit. And then... He had one where an opponent fell out. So it's been a minute since he's been able to get in the cage. Uh, but I- I'm I'm hoping he can deliver here. As Omar said, his losses are Pantoja and Nicolau. And the Nicolau one was even a split that he could have won. And we see how good Nicolau is now. And Dvorak is skilled, don't get me wrong. Um, 
he probably can't beat Cop standing, but he's got some grappling in his bag too, and maybe that's where he's going to have to look to lean in this fight. But I just think Cop is the better athlete. I think the speed helps him, and even if he does get taken down a time or two, I think he gets up. I don't think it's a huge factor. And that means that Cop's going to get him on the feet, and I just think Cop is more dangerous there. They both like to strike on the outside, and I think Cop is better. So Dvorak, I feel like, can't really... He doesn't have that inside game to change it up, so I, th- I think Cop's going to mostly pick him <clears> apart. <throat> I will say UD for Manel Cop. Woo! I'm going to go Manel Cop by knockout in round two. That's it, because my man's got fire power. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let us now turn to the banaways between Said Nurmagomedov and Said Yakub Kakramanov. So- so what what's up? You gonna say something? I just said what a fight. Oh yes, 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 yes. So Saeed Nurmagomedov, the thirty year old out of Dagestan, Russia, sixteen and two as a pro. Uh he's coming off of uh, three straight wins coming into the Saturday night. Uh most recently uh a decision against Douglas Silva de Andraj. Said Yakub <laughs> sending across the octagon from him. He is the 27-year-old fighting out of Chicago, Illinois. Son of a somewhat of a young prospect, 27, and a record of 10 and 2. Uh, well-rounded skill set: three knockouts, four subs, three decision wins. Uh, bringing a four-fight win streak into this weekend. Mark, let's start with you this time. Give us your take and your pick of Saeed versus Saeed Yakub. So we have a dead pick'em fight, odds-wise. Both guys minus 110. And in line with that, it is not an easy fight to pick. Um, I don't. It's it's tough to call. They both of them are very very talented. Uh, Saeed is probably the more skilled fighter. I would say he can do more things. But Saeed Yakub is kind of the perfect style to counter him because he's just so forward. He pushes a pace. He makes it a fight. He, he's relentless in his grappling. And obviously, Saeed's got grappling for days, too. But I think it's that that pace, that relentlessness that could be a factor here because and as as good of a striker as Saeed is, I think he's going to be crowded by, by Saeed Jacob. He's going to try to crash into that distance, shut him down a bit, maybe limit the long-range weapons that Saeed has. Um, and that pace, I think about what it could do by the time the third round comes because we've seen Saeed in other fights that weren't even that high-paced of fights kind of have some ugly third round. So I wonder how this looks here. But I'm actually going to go kind of counter to the points I'm making. And I'm going to say this is the fight where Saeed rises to the occasion and puts on one of the best performances that we have seen from him thus far. I'm going to say that he's forced to fight here, forced to open up a bit, and that the talent shines through because I do think sheer talent, he is the guy that has more of it. So that guy doesn't always win, but I will say he does here. Close fight. I'll say Saeed 29 Omar. Uh, so in in my head, this is just like the line for me. I mean, I I see both of these guys' games very similar to one another. Um, I, I see both of their attributes very similar to one another. I guess it, at this point, it probably comes a little bit down for me to attitude and, and maybe their approach. Um, but I think it's very, very close. Uh, I'm just going to go with Kakramanov by unanimous decision. Kakramanov. Shit, split decision. Uh, I'm going to go with feeling this time, although <laughs> never love picking against the Dagestan guy, but I also feel uh, that Kakramanov, am I butchering that? It's going to get this one done. Now, I like the power and the explosiveness uh, of Saeed Yakub, but Saeed uh, has never been finished, and I don't think it's going to start here. But I think I just like uh, Saeed Yakub, and I'll take him by UD. <clears throat> I've heard it say it, I've heard it pronounced Kakramanov. <coughs> okay. Yeah, that's it. Kakramanov. Kakramanov. Isn't that what Mike, said? Mike, I think I was Mike Kakramanov. was saying something else. Oh, yeah, something else. Who knows? Okay. okay. Fun fight. <clears throat> Here we go. In the welterweight division between Jake Matthews and Matthew uh, Semelsberger. 
So Matthews versus Matthew. The Celtic kid, Jake Matthews, looking un- incredible in his last fight against Andre Fialio back in June when he knocked him out uh, and looked incredible that whole fight. Looked fucking electric. Uh, just backing up a bit. <clears throat> Matthews, the 28-year-old, out of Victoria, Australia, 18-5 and five as a pro, five knockouts, seven subs. Uh, like I said, coming off that uh, very impressive win against Fialio. Matthew, semi the Jedi, Semmelsberger, the 30-year-old out of Maryland. He's 10-4 and four as a pro, coming off of a loss against Alex Morono. Omar, start us all. Give us your take and your pick of Jake Matthew versus Matthew Semmelsberger. I don't rate Matthew Semmelsberger very high, personally. Um, he doesn't have a terrible record in the UFC. Obviously, he's got, you know, Two losses and all the other ones are wins, <clears throat> wins on his record. A um, couple finishes. Losses re- his last fight to Alex Murno, like Mike said. But Jake Matthews, I think at this point, has just found his his moment. He's found his groove. It seems like he's found the way that he needs to fight for himself, that he's the most comfortable. Very impressive in his last performance. It's really hard to pick against him at this point with the momentum that he has. So I'm going to go with Jake Matthews. I think he styles on him for two rounds, and I think he puts him away in the third. So I'm going to go with TKO round three. Mark, hit us with your pick. All right. Matthews, big favorite, minus 270. Uh, Semmelsberger, plus 220. Uh, Yeah. As you said, the last performance couldn't have been more electric. And I think everyone saw it except the UFC, because I'm over here thinking this man is going to get, like, a ranked opponent or at least one of these guys like the leech or someone who's, you know, right outside of the rankings. And instead we somehow get Matt Semmelsberger, who is my number 44 ranked welterweight. So I don't know how this is the matchup for Jake Matthews. I absolutely hate it with a burning passion. I pray he does not somehow lose it and blow the momentum that he has right now. And I also pray that if he gets another great win here, that we give this man a real fight. Cause I don't know why we didn't do it already, but, uh, the version of Jake Matthews that we saw in his last <coughs> fight should smoke Matt Semmelsberger, and he should smoke him on the feet without trouble, which is where Semmelsberger prefers to be. Even if he's not smoking him on the feet, I think Jake Matthews can still smoke Semmelsberger in the grappling. So I'm going Matthews for sure. Semmelsberger is a really tough dude, so <coughs> I would say decision, but I think it's all Jake. I agree. I think Semmelsberger is a very tough welterweight, has decent size and attributes for the weight class. But I'm going to go, I'm going to keep riding this Jake Matthews, you know, new level of talent that he has unlocked in the video game. I'm going to say he knocks him out. I'm going to go another round two knockout for Jake Matthews. Uh, and Let's that's go. certainly what I hope happens. I hope uh, too. Yeah, man. Moving on. Okay, in the lightweight division, uh, Drew Dober taking on Bobby King Green. What a matchup at 155 pounds. Very exciting stuff. It's got Drew Dober, 34-year-old, fighting out of Omaha, Nebraska. He's 25-11 and 11 with one no contest, 12 knockouts, six submissions to add to that. Riding a two-fight win streak coming into the weekend, Bobby King Green on the other side. He's a veteran, the 36-year-old, fighting out of Redlands, California. His record stands at 29 wins, 13 defeats, and one draw, uh, including 10 knockouts and 8 submission victories. He is coming off of uh, that loss against Islam Mahashev back in February of this year. Took some time off after that. Uh, I believe he was a late fill-in for that fight against Mahashev. Am I wrong? Yeah, he was like super late, like a week. Super late, yeah, yeah, and a pretty crazy matchup. And that but was before that. Uh, Mahashev, that's right. Mahashev uh, snapped a two-fight win streak for Bobby Green, in which he was looking pretty good against Ally Quinta and Nasrat Hakparast. Omar, take it first. Give us your pick and your take. Let's go. Such a great fight. Um, I, I love watching Bobby Green fight, and I love watching Drew Dober fight, especially as of late. Drew Dober has just looked really good. Um, I think the the real issue I have is is as the fight plays in my head, I just feel like when Drew Dober starts to put pressure on and starts to put volume on, Bobby Green might get into the habit of doing a lot of the motions and the 
crazy Yoel Romero bullshit where he spends more time doing that than actually returning, putting Judoba in danger, and, and essentially spends all of this time not really fighting back and allowing Judoba to tee off. So I, I see that being a thing. Bobby Green has gotten into that habit in the past with a lot of guys who strike with him. I'm going to go with Drew Dober by unanimous decision. Fuck. So Dober's the favorite. He's minus 155. Bobby Green is plus 130. I'm going to go with the dog here. Uh, Dober could maybe beat more similarly ranked guys and do it more definitively than Bobby Green can. Like, I may pick him more often. But in, in the matchup against each other, I think it favors Bobby Green. I think that he is very hard to hurt enough to take out. And if he's in there the whole time, as nasty as Drew Dober is, I think Bobby Green might be a step ahead. I think he's a little bit quicker. I think he's a little bit cleaner. I think he's smarter defensively. I think he is better at managing the range and the distance between them. I do think it's a really competitive fight. I'm going to love watching this fight. I love both of their technique. They have different styles, but they're both awesome to watch. Um, I think it's going to be competitive. I just think it's a competitive where Bobby Green is winning maybe like 60% of it, and Dober's just trying to kind of crash in and land something bigger to swing it and just doesn't get that. And I will say Bobby Green, UD. Yeah, yeah I, I agree very much that these are uh, two very different stylistic fighters. Drew Dober is a tank at 155. Uh but I find myself agreeing with you, Mark. I think it's going to be mostly a stand-up, stand-up fight, which favors Bobby Green. I think he's the more skilled striker. Uh, and yeah, I agree. I think he's going he's gonna to have faster hands. And just as a striker, he has very good striking defense. And uh, he's very crafty as, as a striker. And I, see, I don't see him finishing by uh, Drew Dober at all. I think Drew Dober is going to eat every shot that Bobby Green has for him. Yeah. But I do see Bobby Green landing more often, and I I think he's going to walk away with with a UD. I'll, I'll say like probably a twenty nine twenty eight or maybe a thirty twenty seven when it's all said and done. Yeah. I'll say <clears throat> uh, we're doing Comey next. Yeah, we're doing Comey next, right? No, uh, Caceres and Arosa. Oh, let's do Caceres. Okay. Okay. The, going to the down to the featherweight division, a fight between Alex Bruce Lee Roy Caceres. And Julian Juicy J. Erosa. So Caceres needing no introduction to MMA purists and diehards of tough fame. The 34-year-old out of Miami, Florida. He's 19 and 13 as a pro. Add one no contest to that. He's coming off of a loss against Sadiq Youssef back in March of this year. Julian Juicy J. Erosa, the 33-year-old out of Washington State. He's 28 and 9 as a pro with 11 knockouts and 12 submissions. Uh, my man knows how to finish when things are going well. He's riding a three fight win streak coming into this Saturday night. Mark, start us out here with your take and pick of Bruce Lee Roy versus Juicy J. All right, so uh, Erosa is the favorite here. He's minus 170. Caceres is plus 145. A lot of fights <clears throat> with uh, odds in the hundreds on this card. It's a lot of close matchups. I like it. Um, yeah, these two boys are going to put on a fun-ass fight. I will be shocked if they don't. They're both guys who have kind of uh, risen to this 15 to 20 range, who I'm not entirely – sorry, to this. I'm going to say to this top 15 to 20 range, who I'm not entirely convinced are this good. But they're both looking pretty good as of late. And the one who I kind of tend to believe in more is Julian Arosa. I'm just, I'm starting to be a little sold on Julian Arosa. <clears throat> last performance was super impressive. And I just don't think Caceres is the right matchup to stop his run right now. I think Arosa is perfectly capable in the wrestling and the scrambling. Now, Caceres can catch people. We, we know that. But... I'm going to trust Arosa to be okay in that department, and I think he's the much better striker. You know, Caceres will land his weird strikes, but I just think that Arosa is going to be working a higher pace, landing more and landing more significantly, and I think he's the more dangerous striker. So I'll say he has the bigger moments, and I will say he wins a UD. Oh, my. 
Yeah, this fight hurts my soul personally. <clears throat> I love these guys both. Um, you know, I don't personally think either one of these guys I think are ever going to become champion. Um, but I, man, do I love and watching these guys fight. Um, Julian Arosa for me has been somebody who I've seen potential in for a long time. He just never seemed to be able to put it all together. I think his latest run, uh, he's really shown that something has changed. He, you know, understands something in his game or how to approach it or whatever, take advantage of his length, especially, um, Alex Caceres has always been pretty consistent in how he fights and how he approaches the game. He's definitely gotten better if you watch his, you know, first fight in the UFC, which was forever ago at this point. So there's definitely been some gains and some improvements in his game. Um, but I think Julian Arosa should have the upper edge in this fight, in my opinion, especially because of his length and because of he knows how to use it. Um, Caceres hasn't lost by submission in quite a bit. The last time he did lose by submission was to Kron Gracie, who is, who is a submission. Um, <laughs> So, you know, Caceres is not the easiest guy to put away, but there's something in my gut that tells me that Julian is going to be able to slip one of these long ass arms in between his, uh, his neck and find some kind of choke, whether it's a Bravo choke, guillotine, rear naked choke, something is going across Alex Caceres' neck to put him out. So I'm going to go with Julian Arosa, third round submission. We are unanimous on this one, gentlemen. I, uh, Erosa, as of late, man, this, this this win streak he's been on, he is turning me into a believer of his talent. And uh, as much as we all love some Bruce Lee Roy, facts, uh, he is the man whose record is much closer to being a 500 overall pro record. And I think that Erosa just has the skill, the talent, and the firepower to uh, to win this fight. I think because Caceres is such a veteran. He has the skills in pretty much all departments to not get finished. So I, I see Julian Arosa taking this by unanimous decision. <clears throat> Love it when we're unanimous together, the three of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Hopping up now to the co-main event of this UFC Fight Night card. In the lightweight division, Armin Sarukian uh, taking on Damir Ismagulov. So Sarukian, the Russian who also is, uh, I believe, Armenian, 26 years old, and he's 18-3 and three as a professional. Seven knockouts, five subs. Uh, he is coming off of that un unanimous decision loss against uh, Mateos Gemrat, which was a very close fight, very, very close fight, and uh, snapped a five-fight win streak for Mr. Sarukian. Standing across from him is going to be the also Russian, who also uh, reps the, I believe, the Kazakhstan flag, yep. is uh, Mr. Asmugalov. 31 years old, 24 and 1 as a professional, 12 knockouts, 1 sub, 11 decisions. He is riding a colossal win streak. I'm not <laughs> going to count that. As a professional, he's undefeated in the UFC. He is 5 and 0 in the UFC. And uh, man, oh man, how the fuck do you pick this fight, Mark? Yeah, what are what are the odds here? Because I they've got to be like dead even. They are wider than I thought they would be. Armin is favored at minus one ninety. Wow. And Demir is plus one fifty five as the dog. Wow. Uh, that's that's really why for this. Didn't expect it either. I <clears> thought maybe <throat> Armin's favored, but I thought maybe like 130, not 190. I, 125 was mine. Yeah. That, that was where I was at. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, to me, it's a much closer fight than that, and it's really, really hard to pick. Uh, both of these guys are so damn good. They have a big opportunity here to set up a big fight for themselves. I think the winner of this fight is in a really good place to get a fight with a name. Uh Neither guy really has a notable weakness that you can spotlight to say this is why this is not going to go their way. Uh, Demir is three inches taller, and he's going to have a two-inch reach advantage. So with a fight this close on paper, if you want to put some weight behind that, you can. Um, I wish this was five rounds. Yeah. Obviously, we're only getting three. The way I have settled this in my brain is simply that Armin has been in there with guys like Demir already. He has been in there with an Islam. He's been in there with a Gamrot. 
Whereas Demir, as much as he has some quality wins, I think he is yet to be in there with someone who is as good as an Armin Sarukian. And I think having seen the level of opponent that you're fighting before matters. And I think that Sarukian, despite being five years younger, is the guy who has had to deal with this level already and who is maybe more ready to take this. So I think he can mix it up. I think he can use the wrestling to his advantage. I do think he will... He, I mean, it's hard to call, but I do think he will have a wrestling advantage. And I think him mixing it up could get him two of these rounds. I will say he takes it 29-28. Sarukin? Yes. Okay. Omar, take it away. I really think this is a coin flip, man. Sarukin's last loss was to Mateusz Gamera, which, again, is one of these things that I feel like is going to happen. Maybe not at the elite stages, um, but definitely in the you know top 10 and down. I think Mateusz Gamera is, is a hell of a fighter, and the pace that that man puts on is crazy. And to that respect, is Mikulov's last uh, win was against Kutate Latse, which one could make the argument Kutate Latse won. So there, there are some high-paced fights that they have both, <clears throat> excuse me, been in, um, and and it's very, very difficult to, to pick, in my opinion. I, I'm I'm going to go with Armin Sarukian. Uh, I don't have a good reason. I'm going to go with Armin Sarukian by decision. <clears throat> I'm surprised that the odds are that far. Same. Uh, yeah. I think it's a very, very close fight. Very tough to pick. Uh, I'm just going to go with Sarukin, not because he's, like, younger. I mean, Ismagulov is 31, so he's, like, in his prime. I, I, I'll go with Sarukin because I think he of his physical attributes. I think he's going to be the, the stronger man. He's just a specimen in there, and I think that might give him some kind of edge. I think he's going to be stronger. And we'll we'll see, man. We'll fucking see. I'm taking Sarukin, but I'll say UD, and but I'm not confident <laughs> at it's, all. It's very rare that the three of us pick a fight and all kind of say, like, there's not really a good reason to say someone's going to win this fight. And we all just did that, which shows yeah. you how much of a coin flip this fight is. Yes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, is it a – I mean, I'm not a betting guy. I'm probably the least – knowledgeable about betting on the show but like would you take the money on the dock if you if you think it's that close yeah yeah especially i bet if you take him by decision you get a little bit higher probably not significantly higher because i'm sure decision <clears throat> is probably what's expected in this fight but you might even get him at like two to one at at decision so yeah it might be worth all right we'll i feel like every time i bet i fuck up the fight so I just don't. I just don't bet anymore. The, the gods yeah. here. I've, been, I've actually been trying to bet a little bit less because too often I find myself like too focused on the bet and not enjoying the fight, and I'm like, For I wish sure. I. Just oh didn't yeah. Bet so I've I've been betting a little bit less these days. Yeah. All right, boys. <clears throat> Main event time: UFC Fight Night Cannoneer versus Strickland. The headliners of this fight night: Jared Cannoneer taking on Sean Strickland in the middleweight division. A Fight of consequence. Jared, the killer gorilla cannoneer, the 38-year-old fighting out of Anchorage, Alaska. I didn't know that. Did not know that. Did not know that guy is from Alaska. Yeah, he lives in Arizona Did now. He, but, didn't uh, he used to work in Alaska. like the, the oil fields or some crazy shit up there? I don't know if that's right. I don't know. I feel like he worked in some sort of hard labor up in Alaska. You could be right. Man, Alaska sounds like a crazy place to live. Sounds okay. awful. <clears throat> yeah. He is six feet tall. He was cool. I would live there. He has fought at heavyweight, light so heavyweight, cool. and now middleweight. He kind of was like an undersized-ish heavyweight yep. and kind of like a medium light heavy. And yep. he's a jacked and terrifying middleweight. Yep. Uh, his record stands at 15 and 6 with 10 knockouts and add two subs to that. And he is coming off of a title fight loss against the great Israel Adesanya back in July of this year. Sean Strickland standing on the other side of the cage. Tarzan, uh, the 31-year-old out of Anaheim, California, comes to middleweight from the opposite direction. Used to be a welterweight in the UFC uh, and has since uh, wanted to cut less, I suppose, and uh, now fights at 
185 and has found quite a bit of success. His record stands at 25 and 4 with 10 knockouts, 4 subs. Uh, he also is coming off of a loss against the new and current champ, Alex Pereira, uh, back in July when Pereira knocked him the fuck out and handed him his second uh, knockout loss of his career. All right, boys. Omar, why don't you take this one first? Give us your take and your pick of this middleweight fight of consequence between Jared Cannonier and Sean Strickland. So real quick, he was a Federal Aviation Administration, so the FAA. He was a uh, air traffic control mechanic. So I knew he did uh, something. Yes, I knew that. I knew he was that. Yeah, I knew he did some sort of tooling business there. Not I just couldn't put my field, name. But... No, not an oil field, but... <clears throat> Something with a goddamn wrench, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think this is an interesting fight just because of of how of the momentum that Sean Strickland has had. I don't really rank Sean Strickland super high. I think Sean Strickland is just a crazy person who has been able to capitalize on specific moments. Um, he's had a lot of opportunities open up for him that he's capitalized on. But skill for skill, I don't really rank him very high. He's a tough dude. Um, he's a tough dude that enjoys getting into a fight, but he's still a human being and he still gets cracked quite a bit and guys with power are still a real threat to his chin. Um, and I think that's exactly what Jerry Cannonier is. Jerry Cannonier is somebody who can definitely put him out if, if, and this is a big if, we see an aggressive Jerry Cannonier in the octagon. A lot of times yes. we get a very yes. tentative and a very slow Jerry Cannonier that doesn't really put things together the way he should. Um, doesn't push the pressure the way he should, et cetera, et cetera. So if we see Jared Kennedy come in top form, I think Sean Strickland is going to end up face down in a pool of his own blood. So I'm going to go with Jared Kennedy round three, KO. Round three, knockout. Okay, Mark. You expecting Jared to be the favorite here? Yes. I I am. Is he not? Dead pick him. Wow. 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 Yeah. I mean I'm 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 more okay with that than Sean Strickland being a favorite. So I'll yeah, I'll take yeah. it. Minus one ten both ways. Um <clears throat> I am starting to feel like Sean Strickland against power strikers is a tough matchup. Um obviously we learned that against Oliveira. I mean Oliveira against Pereira. Um <clears throat> and we learned in that fight that he wouldn't grapple. And since then, every interview I ever see him give, he stresses how he's not going to grapple and grappling's for pussies in the words of Sean Strickland. So I guess he is not going to do that, which, you know, he is kind of well-rounded. So in his come up, he was able to look good because we saw him fight a lot of guys who maybe wanted to grapple and he was able to anti-grapple and beat them with his striking. But in your mind, you were like, all right, when he fights the guys who don't want to grapple, then he can grapple like an Alex Pereira. But if now that we're learning that is not going to happen and that he just wants to be a straight striker no matter who he's fighting, I don't love picking him against power strikers who are on a similar skill level to him. And Jared Cannonier is that. So, you know, like Cannonier is very willing to exchange and... He is the more dangerous finisher. And I just think Strickland fights a bit too open, a bit too cocky. And I think Cannonier can can find a big moment to put his name right back in the conversation. I do fully agree that he's got to fight aggressive. If he doesn't, I could see this get away from him just because of the volume that Sean Strickland puts out. He could easily steal the cards if this gets all the way to the cards. So I think cannonier has got to make sure he fights aggressive. I got to think his coaches are telling him that simply because everyone knows Sean Strickland's a volume striker. Mm -hmm. So I hope he comes out that way. I think he'll come out that way. If he does, I think Strickland is open enough that he's there to be caught. And I will agree. Round three knockout for Jared Cannonier. He finds it. Okay. A couple of things give me pause about this matchup. I'm not saying I agree with the, the odds being a pick. I, I, I do think that Cannonier, given his skill set, I would expect him to be the favorite, although Sean Strickland has a, a better record, a much better record. <clears throat> yes, Cannonier is a power striker, brings a lot of danger in there, but he doesn't have the attributes over Sean Strickland that 
that Pereira enjoyed. I mean, you fight Alex Pereira, it's like fighting a fucking giant redwood. Uh, they're going to be standing eye to eye. I think Sean Strickland might have an inch on him. Yep. Um, so, yeah. And to Omar's point before, I was, I was going to make the point myself that what what can happen to Ken and Eric seems sometimes is that he seems a little too tight in there. Totally. And you wish that a guy as dangerous as him would would lean into that a little more and be a little more aggressive. Of course, easy for me to say. I'm not in there fighting. Um, and you, you wonder, if, I know exactly <laughs> to Mike Perry, <laughs> you go, yeah, go, Mike, go, you go. And I wonder if a style of a Sean Strickland, that sort of in your face, constant pressure, I could call it pesky, constant jabbing, shit talking might add to Jared Cannonier tightening up and kind of almost freezing. <clears throat> so you know what? Just to be different, I was I'm, I was leaning Cannonier, but just to be different, I will say that Sean Strickland gets out of there without escaping a knockout, escaping the power. Uh, maybe he gets rocked in a round or a moment or two, but gets out of there winning three out of five rounds. And I'm going to say Sean Strickland uh, gets a big win on his record against Jack Cannonier with the UD. Could happen. Ooh. Would be big, and I my my guess is that the winner of this fight is going to get matched with Marvin Vittori. So there's a big fight on the line here potentially wow. for the winner. Wow. See, I would think, and then just thinking off the top of my head right now, I would quickly pick Vittori over Strickland because Vittori is not the kind of guy who gets frozen. Vittori will be like talking shit right back and being like, "Let's fucking go," and he's more of a tank than Strickland is. I One would I argue that Vittori would get into a Nate Diaz, Donald Cerrone kind of match though, especially with all that shit talking. Who would he be in that matchup? He'd be Cerrone. The punching bag. <laughs> Maybe. Well, boys, we've done it again. Yes, we have. Boom. I do not have trivia for tonight because I knew that we were going to end that. The fans are missing the trivia, boring. Mike. I know. I'm sorry. We're going to get shit on for the patty, and we're gonna get <laughs> shit on. No uh, I need to buckle up for the comments. I'm gonna get. Oh. How many? What's what's the over under for how many people are gonna call us fucking clowns this weekend? I mean, what I will say this. I wanted to say this earlier and just like emph- put a point of emphasis on this. Neither one of you guys are patty fanboys. You're not. You're not trying to like be on the patty train. Nope. You just I, you just happen to have the wrong opinion about, <laughs> about the outcome of that fight, uh, and you're also man. you're. I mean, just to say, like, I'm not yeah. exaggerating. You guys are like in the one percent of people who who oh. think that fight went that way. Oh, eight, I see it. I, eight eight percent on a made decision. Eight yeah. percent, dude. I remember I, when I woke up the night of, or the the morning after the fights, the headlines and everything else. I, I swear to you, I thought Patty Pimblett was on the ground for eight minutes straight the way that people were talking about this fight. I thought the fight was way more competitive than it seemed. But, again, I definitely seem to be in the minority here, but I don't know. Fuck them all. 